Hi, I'm John Green. This is Crash Course World History, and today we're going to talk about World War One. We actually have two videos about World War One. Today we're going to talk about how World War One happened. Next week we're going to talk about why. World War One is a really big deal, especially to those of us who are really interested in like industrialization and nation states and modernity. So usually we don't talk that much about wars, but we're going to make an exception. So I'm filming this in 2014, which means that the Great War started 100 years ago, and the World War I centenary is just so hot right now, I can't miss out on it. So most historians agree that the event that started World War I was the assassination of Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand on June 28, 1914. But beyond that, there's not a lot of agreement. Others say the war really started after Franz Ferdinand bit it, like when Germany declared war or when Russia mobilized. So America watches World War I from 1914 to April of 1917. And people ask why. Why doesn't America get involved immediately? And American politicians are petrified of being drawn into a foreign war and fighting for foreign ends. Remember, the United States is a nation of immigrants. People came here to avoid war in Europe. The Americans had, from the very beginning, an official policy of neutrality. But neutrality never meant indifference or apathy. Even though we're saying we don't want to involve ourselves, we certainly were sympathetic in trying to help and aid that cause in ways that the Germans saw as being destructive to their war aims. So in all those ways, the Wilson administration is walking a tightrope. Women in the war, background. Before the war, women had been treated as second-class citizens. There were many jobs that only men could apply for, and women were paid less than men, even when they did the same work. Most important of all, women did not have the right to vote. Thousands of women took over jobs of all kinds, as more and more men were needed on the Western Front. The government used propaganda to persuade women to volunteer for work. They were told they would be helping their sons, brothers and fathers at the front. Women worked in almost every type of job, Drivers, delivering milk and mail, managing businesses, engineering and all of the work that had been previously done by men. Women made up the workforce in munition factories, making the millions of shells needed for the war. This was very skilled and extremely dangerous work. Many women volunteered to serve as nurses. This women did not actually get to fight, but they did carry out important work to assist the fighting troops. Many women's organisations, such as the WRVS, organised collections of food and tobacco to send to the troops on the front line. Often they would knit gloves and scarves. For many women, the war was a liberating experience. For the first time they were able to get out of their house and learn new skills and earn good wages. Wilson felt that he had to take the U.S. into the war against Germany and Austro-Hungary. When America entered the conflict, it changed the war. Although not as much as everybody expected, because just as America was entering the war, Russia was dropping out. Now, it's a race. As Russia is leaving the war, can the United States get enough troops in to tilt that scale in favor of the Allies. They brought in the men, the materiel, and the resources that these Allies needed desperately. The French and the British were suffering a sense that the war was stalemated, that defeat might be coming, and the American commitment was a real shot in the arm for both political leaders and for ordinary soldiers in the trenches. Prior to the outbreak of World War I, America was recognized as a strong young nation. By joining with the Allies and really helping to bring about the end of the war, we positioned ourselves as one of the world powers for the rest of the century.
The 1920s have been called the Roaring Twenties, and for good reason. Not only was American culture roaring in terms of style and social trends, but the economy was roaring as well. The decade was a time of tremendous prosperity. Following the end of World War I, the industrial might of the United States was unleashed for domestic peaceful purposes. Within a few short years, an economic shift took place as the economy transitioned from wartime production to peacetime production. New technologies like the automobile, household appliances, and other mass-produced products led to a vibrant consumer culture, stimulating economic growth. Despite fighting being over, the war did not formally end until numerous treaties were signed between the nations involved. Most notable of these was the Treaty of Versailles, which Germany signed on June 28, 1919. This treaty demanded that Germany accept sole responsibility for causing the war, as well as pay billions of dollars in reparations. Ironically, the severe and controversial Treaty of Versailles is considered by many as a direct cause of the Second World War.